Hi, I'm James Muir, and this is a screencast for Make More Noise and the Miskin Theatre at Northwest Kent College. What we're going to have a look at today is using Apple's GarageBand software to trigger live sound effects. This can be useful in a number of different situations. For example, you can use it in theatre, for radio shows or podcasts, in music production, and for Foley work for video or film. Uh, so GarageBand's just loading, as you can see on the screen here. And here's our default GarageBand window, and it's come up set with a grand piano sound. But what we're looking to do is trigger live sound effects. Uh, so what we need to do is change this grand piano sound into a sound effects sound. So what we're going to do is move our cursor down to the bottom right-hand corner of the screen and click on the letter I here in the right-hand corner, which is going to bring up the track information. And uh, as you can see, we're selected on pianos and keyboards and grand piano. And we've got our sounds running from bass at the top to woodwinds down here at the bottom. Um, what we're looking for is sound effects. So we're going to click on the sound effects list and it brings up as, uh, a list of the available types of sound effects instruments. So we've got from applause and laughter at the top here to transporter down here at the bottom. Um, I'm just going to load up comedy noises. And uh, once we've done that, we don't need to have our track info open anymore. So I'm just going to click again on the letter I here to shut that. And then come up to the window drop down menu here at the top of the screen and select musical typing. Once we've got musical typing loaded up, what you can see here is a, a QWERTY keyboard laid out to represent a piano style keyboard. So the letter A uh, is actually representing a note which you can play on your MIDI keyboard or you can play it on your QWERTY keyboard. So if I press the letter A on my QWERTY keyboard and the letter S or playing on my MIDI keyboard, which I've also got plugged in. <laughs> or as a third option, you can literally just click with your mouse straight onto the keys on the screen. OK, so that's fine if we're trying to do a comedy show. Uh, what if we need some different sounds? Well, you can replace any of these sounds which are available um, in the sound effects player by coming down here and looking at the bottom left hand corner of this particular box. And you can see it says details. And then we've got a disclosure triangle here. We click that. You can see we've then got a list of what sounds are mapped to what keys. So on the letter A, we've got comedy boing on the letter Y, cartoon string break and so on. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to open our loop browser, which we do by clicking down here on the icon that looks like a human eye. And then you can see in our loop browser we've got a bunch of different ways of searching for different types of sounds. So you can search by types, descriptions, or you can type uh, search by musical instrument types. So what we're going to do here is we're going to select effects. It's going to take a couple of so uh, seconds to search through. And then we've got a bunch of different effect sounds. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, uh, let's have a look at aeroplane effects. So to audition that, I just clicked on the sound's name, and to stop it auditioning, I just clicked again on it. So same idea, let's go down the list and have a look at some other sounds. Got an alarm. So if we wanted to replace our comedy boing, which we've got on the letter A, with the sound we've got here, alarm 02, we literally just pick up the sound, click on it and hold it, and drag it across. And then once it's over the letter A, you can see a green plus sign appears, which means it's ready to copy. And once we let go, that sound is now loaded up on the key A. And let's do a couple more so we can make sure that this is nice and clear. And there we've got uh, the basic musical typing keyboard, but with specific sounds that we've mapped to it ready to play. So uh, we can now recreate our scene in our play. by literally just clicking on the screen or by selecting the keys on our QWERTY keyboard.
Okay, so once we've made those changes, um, they're right and we've got the sounds in the right kind of order how we want them, what we're going to do is save that sound off so it's available to us next time we load up GarageBand. So we can close down the Loop Browser and open up the Track Info tab again. So clicking on the logo that looks like an I and then on the letter I. And now if you uh, remember from when we were in this window last time, we've got our list of sounds we can browse here. And then we've got another tab behind it called Edit. So if we click on Edit, and you'll see we've got the, a, a nice clear clickable button here at the bottom which says Save Instrument. So I'm just going to save that off as uh, NWKC Demo. And then I can save that. And if we go back to our browser and browse away from uh, our sound effects sound, and then we can actually browse back to sound effects and we should see that we've got a new sound available here in our list called NWKC Demo. We'll load that up and hopefully it's how we left it. And that's the basics for using GarageBand to trigger live sound effects. I'm going to do another tutorial on this subject and I'm going to go into it in a bit more detail and I'm going to show you how to set up a default instrument and how to import sounds from third party sources. So sounds you've recorded yourself or sounds you found on the internet or sounds off demo CDs. I'm James Muir and this has been a screencast for the Miskin Theatre at Northwest Kent College and make more noise. Thanks for watching.